Hello everyone, my name is Liv, and as you can tell by the location change, this is another Recent Reads video. So every time I talk about the next 10 books I have read throughout the year, I try and film in a different location just to switch it up. I am now up to 40 books, so we're going to talk about from my 31st read to my 40th read. The first book that I read was The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a book set during World War II in France. It follows two different sisters named Vienne and Isabel. Vienne is a mother. Mother. She lives a very domestic type of life and Isabel is a younger sister and she lives a very rebellious type of life where she's always Questioning other people. She's always trying to stand out and stand for what she believes in So when the Nazis take over France, they both live very different lives during that time. Vienne has a Nazi that is occupying her home and Isabel is trying to help smuggle out UK pilots that have been downed in France. So she's trying to rebel against the occupation in France in a very small way but a very dangerous way. And I really love this novel so much. It was one of the most emotional reads I read in a long time. I did not cry while reading it but I wanted to so badly. It was just such a sad, heart-wrenching book both for Vienne and Isabel. They both both lived very different lives and they went through very different situations but both of their situations were so dire and just so nerve-wracking the amount of tension that is overlying this entire novel is incredible it was such a well-written novel and I also loved just reading about the bond of two sisters that weren't necessarily close at first but throughout this time and throughout this terrible situation they have grown closer even if they're miles and miles apart because they both believe in each other and they're both hoping that the other is okay. This book is just one of my favorite books of 2019. I cannot get enough of it. It was amazing and I just am in awe of this story and how much grief and how much just like emotion was packed into this book and it was amazing and I can't believe I had this on my TBR for months and months and months and I had literal strangers recommending me this book and it only took me until this year to pick it up and I wish I picked it up sooner. The next book I read was on audiobook and it was a reread and it was Daisy Jones and the Six. I already read this once this year and I had to read it another time on audiobook and the audiobook was amazing. It's a full cast audiobook so every single character in this novel which is written in a oral history kind of like a play each person has their own narrator so reading it physically first was a trip because it kind of feels like you're reading a play but then listening to an audiobook it feels like you're listening to a fictionalized podcast where just like the scenes are playing out before your eyes and you're just like fascinated by this band and it was just as good as reading it physically. I think I prefer reading it physically because I don't mind reading plays so I enjoy that type of aspect where you don't get a lot of detail and you mostly get dialogue because I think dialogue is so important to a story and this was so well written but the audiobook was just as good so it depends on what you want to read. If you love plays, I would highly recommend reading it first, but if you just want to listen to it, you can listen to an audiobook. Both are amazing ways to consume this story, and it is still one of my favorite books of this year. So the next book I read is on audiobook, and I actually received a free copy from Book of the Month YA, which is a monthly subscription service where they highlight like five different YA books, and you get to choose which books you want sent to your home. And it is a wonderful monthly subscription service. I been such a big fan of book of the month so having them create a YA version of their book of the month was amazing and I was so excited when I received with the fire on high because I recently finished on audiobook and just having this physical copy is just one of my favorite things because this is one of the prettiest books I've ever seen and it is just amazing the art style is amazing the fact it's covered in food is beautiful. I just, I love it so much. So with the fire and high follows Amani and she is a teenager who wants to become a chef. She loves cooking. She loves experimenting in the kitchen. She loves creating her own recipes and just like tweaking it every single time in order to see what will happen because she believes that food should be an experience and meals should just change your life and bring forth memories and just really connect with you. But she's also a mom in high school so she also has to deal with the fact that she has a toddler that she has to take care of. And 
while she is dealing with the fact that she wants to become a chef, she wants to work in a restaurant, she also has to deal with applying to colleges, taking care of her daughter, and dealing with the fact that a new boy has moved into school. He is head over heels for her and he wants to win her over, but she's not feeling it. But eventually, they do fall in love. And With the Fire on High is such an amazing audiobook because Elizabeth Acevedo herself narrates the novel just like she did with The Poet X. Her narration style is beautiful. It's lyrical. It has a rhythm to it. It just brings forth so many emotions and I just love her so much. She's my favorite narrator ever. And she's such an amazing, talented writer and an amazing narrator. And this audiobook was such a breeze to fly through and I just loved it so much. I loved learning more about Amani's life. I've never read a novel with a teenage mother so reading about that and the struggles that come with it made me realize how much those people go through and how much stress that they have and how they have to both be a high school student but an adult at the same time and they're just kind of in that in-between phase where they don't know what they are and they're just very confused and they're stressed out and I just give credit to so many of those people who do have children in high school and it was just such a well-written novel with beautiful food descriptions, beautiful descriptions in general and Imani is one of my favorite characters now. She's just so soulful, she's so passionate and I just love her so much. She's such an amazing main character and this was definitely one of my favorite reads of 2019 as well. It was just so amazing. If you have not picked up Elizabeth Acevedo's work, please do. So I accidentally skipped two books and did not realize it because I don't have them with me physically, but let's just kind of backtrack. The 31st book that I read was Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez, and this is a Rick Riordan Presents imprint, and the main character is Cuban. He also has the ability to get things from different universes and put it into his own, and he has to deal with the fact that that's kind of going out of control and his dead mother is coming back to life in his new universe and it's a middle grade. It wasn't my favorite audiobook to listen to because like I always tell people, middle grades aren't targeted towards me. I'm not their target audience so of course I'm not going to love it as much as a middle grade reader would but it still was an entertaining read and I always am searching for some Cuban representation from any single genre so reading about that and reading about the food, like the different sayings that like Cuban say was so fun to listen to. The main character is so spunky and sarcastic and I feel like that's always something that's present in Rick Riordan Presents. So if you have any middle grade readers or if you're looking for a middle grade read, I would highly recommend this because it's very fantastical. It has Cuban culture. It is taking place in Miami. It is adorable and it was a good read. And the other book I forgot to mention was How to Make a Wish by Ashley Herring Blake. This is about a girl who lives with her single mother and she's of not really stable mother. So the main character Grace has to move in with her mother and her new boyfriend who is the father of Grace's ex-boyfriend. So it's a very difficult, very sticky, very awkward situation. But while she's dealing with that, she's also dealing with the fact that she wants to move to New York to go to college as all main characters do apparently even though it's very expensive. And while she's also dealing with wanting to move out of this very small town that she just feels stifled in, a new girl moves in named Ava and she has lived through a very dark time in her life and she is now moving onward and they're both kind of falling in love with each other but they both have a lot to deal with and they both have, both have a lot of baggage. So it's both of them coming together and just like kind of falling in love, sharing their stories and supporting one another throughout their situations. It was a good contemporary, it wasn't my favorite in the world. A lot of people have recommended it to me on Twitter and I decided to read it because I wanted to read a female-female romance because I haven't read one in a while, but it wasn't my favorite in the world, mostly because Grace's mom just like took over the story and I just wish that we had more of the romance. Now that we're back on track, let's go with my next read and it was The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. This is a book set in 1950s Spain during the General Francisco Franco regime which is a fascist regime in Spain which I had no idea about because once we get to like the 50s in high school we don't learn about that history. It kind of just gets brushed aside. So learning about this was something I never heard about in high school or in college or anything. So this follows multiple different points of view and it follows a couple of people who live in Spain. One works in a church, one wants to help his friend become a matador, and the other one works in a hotel that the other main character goes to. His name is Daniel. His mom 
is Spanish and they're going to Spain for a vacation and he meets Anna who works at the hotel and Daniel wants to become a photojournalist so he decides to take photos of Spain while he's there and he's kind of taking photos of the corruption and the secrets that Spain is hiding from the world and he's uncovering what Spain is doing in real time while he's vacationing in Spain and it's a very dangerous situation because Spain wants to cover that up from the public but Daniel is an outsider so he kind of just goes ahead and takes photos of what's happening while he is also falling in love with Anna who works at the hotel. Rita Sapetis is one of my favorite historical fiction authors. Like I will read any single thing that she puts out because she generally always highlights a piece of history that not a lot of people know about. I remember listening to her talk about this book before it was even written and I was so excited for it but I do have to say this wasn't my favorite Rita Sapetis book mostly because I couldn't connect with the two main characters so if we're having four main characters that we're following, I couldn't really connect with half of those characters. And I also wish that we had Priya who was working at the church. I wish we had more of an insight from her because we got to see a lot of her point of view, but her point of view was vital to the story. And I feel like towards the end, she was kind of just dropped off and forgotten about. And I just wish that rather than us following a boy who lived in America and is Spanish and is coming to Spain to learn about the corruption, I wish we had followed people who lived in Spain and lived through the entire regime because then you could learn so much more about their hardships and stuff. But I could also appreciate Ruda kind of following Daniel instead because we're like Daniel. We're following him as we're learning more about Spain and the regime. So we're both as unknowing as Daniel, but I just wish we followed the Spaniards more because I feel like their points of view could have been so much more heavy and like hard-hitting and it could have really showcased what people in Spain had to go through in the 50s. While it was an informative and very immersive read, it was in my favorite of Ruta Sapetis, but that's not to say it's not a good book. You could really tell how much Ruta has researched when it diving into this topic because not only do you get a fictionalized story about this regime but you also get quotes about Francisco Franco's regime as well from people from America and from Spain and that is woven into the story as well before every chapter there's a quote from like newspapers and different like catalogs that are from the National Archives and it's very interesting to read about and I'm so glad I learned about this time in history because it's such an important time in history to learn about I just wish I connected with the characters more and I wish we learned more from the characters who were Spaniard. The next book I read was Moonstruck which is a graphic novel that I got at Book Expo. It follows a werewolf barista named Julie and she is dating another werewolf and they decide to go to a kind of like show with their friend Chet who is a centaur and while that show is going on Chet gets turned into a human so the main characters have to figure out how to turn Chet back into a werewolf and it is just such a cute little paranormal quick graphic novel to read the art style is beautiful it's very pastel-y and just like the amount of detail that is in this graphic novel is so cute like I kept on looking at the background because every single character in the background was so cute and they all had cute little details and it was very very short and very quick and I wish it was a little bit longer but it was still an adorable diverse read and it was a it was just so cute and I just love paranormal graphic novels because you could do so much with the art style and the drawings and the sketches and I just loved it so much. So it was a very cute summary read just to kind of like spend a, a few hours just enjoying the story and all that. After that I read a read that shouldn't really be considered a read but I'm going to consider it anyway. And it is a sheet story which is a free comic book day type of pamphlet thing that I forgot to bring here so I can't can't hold it up but it is a tiny little story from the world of sheets which is a graphic novel that I got previously in last year's book con it is about a girl who works at a laundromat that her family owns and a ghost covered in a sheet haunts it and it is adorable it is very Steven Universe with the color scheme and it is just the cutest story ever so a sheets story is a little story bridging the gap between sheets and delicates which is going to be the sequel free comic book day is just a day to share a little piece of your comics and give it out for free to your readers so this was a story that just kind of kept you in the world of sheets but it wasn't very vital to read in order to read the sequel but it was still adorable if you're a fan of sheets like I am it was just 
so heartwarming to dive back into the world even for a little bit and it was just so cute and I'm so glad I got that book expo. The next thing that I read was a poetry collection by Jenna Clara and it is Water Runs Red. I got this from book expo because Jenna Clara is one of my friends and she wrote this and she is just so talented and I just know how much work she put into this poetry collection. It is full of not only poetry but typography and photography as well and Jenna just really did the most with this and I do have to say this is the most creative poetry collection I've ever seen in my life. It is just so full of beautiful poetry, beautiful typography, and beautiful poems as well talking about asexuality, bad blood between bad friendships, new friendships that blossom along the way, and just current events in the world that is very hard-hitting and relatable and it was just such a beautifully composed poetry collection and if you're a fan of Amanda Lovelace I would highly recommend this. You would love this. And the last thing in my recent reads is Stargazing. And this is from the same writer as The Prince and the Dressmaker. This is about two Chinese American households. Christine becomes friends with a new girl named Moon. And Moon is kind of like a bad influence on Christine. She's just like having her rebel in just very small ways as kids do and then moon decides to tell christine one of her secrets is that she can see like celestial magical beings that nobody else can see and this is based on kind of like a true story from the author's perspective and i don't want to give away like what that true story is but it's a very hard-hitting book like you think it's a very light very airy very cute little graphic novel but it actually has some like hard-hitting topics in it that are very important to talk about that isn't talked about a lot in graphic novels and I'm very glad I read this and it was just such an enjoyable quick read. Graphic novels always make me so happy because they are all so cute and pastel-y and just like the most adorable things ever so I was so glad I was able to pick this up at Book Expo and also read it and enjoy it. So those are all my recent reads. I will have another one up soon because I have gotten up to 50 reads so far for this year which I'm very proud of and I hope you enjoy learning about my thoughts about these novels. Let me know if you've read any of them. Let me know if you're excited for any of them and be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more from me and thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your kind words and I will see you in another video. Bye!